Today's video is all about satellite relative motion and proximity operations. We have two objectives. The first is to understand the motion of one satellite with respect to the other using relative motion plots. And the second is to be able to describe the relative motion between these two satellites with different periods, eccentricities, or both. So what does it look like from our satellite's point of view to maneuver close to another satellite? We call this relative motion. And what we're going to see is that we're going to experience different relative motion for our spacecraft depending on how we change our classical orbital elements. And the only classical orbital elements that we're going to talk about changing or adjusting would be that of our centimeter axis, our eccentricity, or potentially changing both of those. But in each one of these cases, you're going to end up with some sort of relative motion um, that's going to be able to describe the kind of um, maneuvering that you can expect for our spacecraft. And lastly, we'll kind of talk about what it looks like for a satellite to actually come up and dock with another one. So to begin with, we're going to start off with some assumptions. We'll talk more a little bit about what this frame looks like, this local vertical, local horizontal frame. But to begin with, we've got a target satellite that's going to be on a circular orbit and an interceptor satellite that's going to be in plane with that target satellite. So we're not going to talk about any kind of out of plane uh, rendezvous or any kind of out of plane proximity operations. Everything we're going to be talking about in the next few slides is going to be having to do with our target satellite on a circular orbit and our interceptor in plane with that orbit. So begin with, what does it look like to change the size of our orbit, or our major axis? So as you, as you may recall, as you change the major axis, you are also changing the period. As we increase the major axis, we've increased the period. If we decrease the major axis, we've decreased the period. So a satellite that's in a lower orbit, which would have a smaller major axis, will appear to be moving away from the target because it's actually going to be moving, moving faster its period is actually going to be smaller or shorter and therefore it's going to actually look like it's moving away from the spacecraft from the target spacecraft here in the same way our interceptor 2 satellite which is on a larger orbit is going to be appear to be falling behind it's going to be looking like it's actually moving backwards because its period is longer and if we're this interceptor 3 satellite that's on the same sized orbit as our target we're actually going to be appear to be fixed in space. So even though these two orbits or are, are this, this target satellite is in motion, our interceptor satellite is also in motion, they're going to look like they're, they're fixed from our satellite's point of view, from our target satellite's point of view. We call this phenomena linear drift. So when we change our semi-major axis, axis, we've incurred some sort of linear drift. The next one we're going to talk about is changing our eccentricity. So to begin with, let's look over here on the left. So our target satellite, again, is on a circular orbit. So that's a that blue. And the interceptor is on this red orbit that has the same size or same similar major axis, but has a slightly different eccentricity. And what you'll notice is that the uh, relative motion that we're going to experience is something called natural motion circumnavigation, wherein our interceptor satellite is going to appear to do this kind of loop around our target. So for every period, it's going to look like our satellite, our interceptor satellite, is going to make one full lap around our target. Well, why is this the case? Well, it has to do with um, the fact that our interceptor is not going to be moving at a constant velocity. Because its orbit is somewhat elliptical, at perigee, it's going to be moving somewhat faster. So we'd see that kind of down here, where our spacecraft is actually going to be moving faster than our target satellite. And then as we approach apogee over here, where we kind of see the picture over here on the left, our spacecraft is going to look like it's actually drifting behind. So that's why we end up with this natural motion circumnavigation by just changing our eccentricity. So here's what it would look like in the inertial frame. So looking, if we're kind of, uh, you know, standing on the surface of the moon or something like that, we're looking down at these spacecraft. This is what we would see. And from our satellite's point of view, you would see something that looked like this. So here is our target spacecraft. And here's our interceptor spacecraft that's looping around. So there you go. We've got this natural motion circumnavigation. Pretty cool, huh? And we haven't really even burned any fuel to make this happen. All we've done is changed our eccentricity. So really useful for us. What does it look like to change both our semi-major axis and our eccentricity? So if our target satellite, again, is on a circular orbit, and our interceptor satellite is on a slight, slightly smaller orbit, where its apogee is actually coincident with the target's uh, orbits, um, essentially semi-major axis, you would end up with this kind of looping maneuver, wherein our spacecraft is going to actually come as it's at, at perigee, so down over here. It's going to move up, and as it's moving towards apogee, it's going to be slowing down, so it's actually going to be moving kind of relatively backwards. And then it's going to speed up past perigee again and keep doing this looping maneuver. So we call this 
either a loop-de-loop -loop or sometimes it's referred to as a teardrop maneuver and it's really useful for us as we're inspecting different orbits and uh, if it's a very useful orbit for us in terms of relative motion. So changing our A, E and, and changing both of them at the same time ends up with different relative motion. Now we're going to talk a little bit about proximity operations and what it actually looks like from our spacecraft's point of view to actually do like a home and transfer maneuver. So to begin with, we have our interceptor target here that might be on a, a smaller circular orbit than our target, our spacecraft. And notably, it's going to be moving faster than our target spacecraft, so you might see something that looks like this. Then as we do our initial delta V, as we do our first maneuver, we're actually going to be increasing the size of our, of our orbit. So what you see with the increased size is that the spacecraft appears to be slowing down as it's approaching this uh, rendezvous point. And as you might remember, our rendezvous is going to actually in, 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 uh, be at this point here at the target. So our first maneuver is here. This is what our interceptor looks like. It progresses on that track until it gets to our second burn. So at our second burn, it actually um, decreases its velocity uh, once again. So, in decrease, so increases velocity, and then sorry, we increase our velocity here, and we actually make our successful rendezvous with our target. So that's what a home and transfer would look like from our spacecraft's point of view. So hopefully with this video, you've been able to understand what it looks like uh, with, uh, in terms of relative motion, how spacecraft move relative to one another, and how changing specific orbital elements uh, can actually incur particular relative motions, and we can exploit that to our advantage militarily. We'll see you next time. Thanks.